Good morning and welcome to the WFOT Congress 2018. <laughs> Introducing delegates of the WFOT member organizations, Argentina, Australia, Austria, Bangladesh, Belgium, Bermuda, Brazil, Canada, China, Colombia, Costa Rica, Cyprus, Czech Republic, France, Germany, well, Ghana, Haiti, Hong Kong, Iceland, Iran, Ireland, Israel, Italy, Jamaica, Japan, Jordan, Kenya, Latvia, Lithuania, Madagascar, Malaysia, Morocco, <laughs> Namibia, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Nigeria, Norway, Pakistan, Philippines, Portugal, Romania, Russia, Rwanda, Saudi Arabia, Slovenia, our host country, South Africa. Sweden, Switzerland, Taiwan, Trinidad and Tobago, Turkey, Uganda, Ukraine, 
United Kingdom. United States of America. Zambia. Zimbabwe. And now, introducing the WFOT Executive Management, Athena Sai, Program Coordinator, Standards and Quality. Lyle Duke, Program Coordinator, Education. Sandra Bresler, Program Coordinator, Practice Development. Liliana Alvarez, Program Coordinator, Research. And now, the Executive. Richard Ledger, Executive Director. Samantha Shan, Vice President Finance. Sue Baptiste, Vice President. And a very warm welcome to Marilyn Patterson, the President. <laughs> welcome to the WFOT delegates. As the President of the World Federation of Occupational Therapists, it gives me immeasurable pleasure to be here at the 17th WFOT World Congress. And I was talking to our Russian delegate this morning um, and just reminiscing, this is my fifth World Congress that I've been involved with. I have waited 14 years to return to Cape Town and trust me, it was well worth the wait. <laughs> the World Federation of Occupational Therapists currently comprises of 101 member organizations representing 550,000 occupational therapists globally. The African region has been represented within WFOT since its inauguration in 1952, with South Africa being one of the 10 founding members. Kenya became a member in 1976, and since that time, occupational therapy has developed steadily as a profession throughout the region, leading to the implementation and activities of the Occupational Therapy Africa Regional Group. And our Vice President, Samantha Shan, informed me that with the um, approval of the program in Morocco, we now have programs in North Africa, East Africa, West Africa, and Southern Africa. So we are spreading across the region. The Congress management team and subcommittees have all been working enthusiastically and energetically to ensure that the WFOT Congress 2018 is a great success. When considering the theme of connected in diversity positioned for impact, as occupational therapists, we need to develop new and innovative approaches to practice and find increasingly original ways to deliver service and make a difference to people's lives, health and well-being. Above all else, we need to learn from and to support each other. Dreams are without question the most important because without, without them, you will never achieve anything. Do you have a dream? If you have a dream, then you have a duty and a responsibility to yourself to make it come true. Because if you don't make your dreams come true, then you are just a dreamer. We all know and understand the value of occupational therapy to the health and well-being of all people. And we all, at some time in our career, wish more people knew about us. That is our dream. And it is therefore our responsibility to make it come true. It gives me enormous pleasure to declare open this Congress. Thank you.
So now I'd like to introduce the president of the South African Occupational Therapy Association, Helen Buchanan. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Cape Town and the 17th World Federation of Occupational Therapists Congress. The Occupational Therapy Association of South Africa is absolutely thrilled to have this honor of co-hosting the first ever WFOT Congress in Africa. We've planned a program to stimulate and challenge our thinking to take the profession forward into the future. Enjoy the next four days and make the most of every opportunity you'll have to learn, share, and network with colleagues from around the world. And most importantly, to enjoy our beautiful country. Welcome. Thank you, Helen. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce Lena Van Niekerk and Richard Ledger, the core conveners of the WFOT Congress. Unfortunately, Richard is unable to be with us today due to some unforeseen personal circumstances. But so um, Lana is going to speak for both of them. Did I say Lena? Sorry. <laughs> well, five minutes in, first mistake. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marilyn, for welcoming us all here today, but also for your support in the last six years. I really miss having Richard here with us today because it would have been really good. He's lent so much support and he's been with us throughout the process. So I just want to honor Richard as well. So occupational therapy in South Africa has come a long way. I think you would agree with me. Today is a landmark day in our history. It will be one that we will remember. We will remember it because each of you came here to our homes, to our shores, to be with us and to learn with us. We are immensely grateful. I'm here standing filled with joy and a lot of gratitude. It is such a pleasure to have you all here. For many of us, we dared to dream that this conference could happen. It was six years ago. And there are people in this room who, who helped and supported us all the way, so many of you, the local organizing committee, also the, the WFOT, and it's become an, a reality. So on the theme of dreams, we dared to dream, and we, today it's becoming a reality. The reality we're looking at is four days together as a profession. It's four days that is a space that has been pre-populated with a program that is so rich and diverse, but it's also four days with so much potential for ongoing interaction, unplanned, around the tea ta table, interactions between people. And I hope that this space we're now sharing for these four days will in somehow change each of our lives going into the future. I said to you that I would really have loved to have Richard here in also honoring the local organizing committee. Um, they're sitting in the front row and we're hoping to be able to have them so you can, you can meet them. Um, on the screen, do we have them? If we're not, we're just going to ask them. Oh, and there we have Rashan Khalfan from the um, Scientific Committee. <laughs> and then we, the next is Elwani Ramagando. You'll hear more from her. <laughs> we have Mike, Michael Awood, who's doing marketing and uh, sponsorship. And then Nikki, who's been looking after the students. I also just want to take a moment to thank the student volunteers at this point, and then... And then we have Mape Lady Motemele from Local Operations. 
the time, care and dedication these people put into putting together a program specially for you. Thank you very much. I now have the pleasure to introduce Marlene Leroux, who agreed to add some flavor and energy, because that's how I know her, to our welcome ceremony today. Marlene is the chief executive um, of the Artscape Center. It's probably not a center of Artscape, my apologies. Mistake number two. She was recently honored with a very prestigious Commonwealth Point of Light Award, which is for her dedication and life work in the disability area. Marlene has a few books, numerous awards. You will see them on, um, if you Google her. I'm not gonna list them. But the most notable one was a book that they did, the book's titled Look At Me. You might want to look at it. It's a fascinating book in which women are celebrated, the sensuality of women are celebrated in a lovely, glossy picture magazine of women with disability. So I welcome Marlene to the stage. Good morning, everybody. Yay! And I would really would like to start, my first is that we have lost a wonderful activist in disability, and her name is Humpo Ndebele, and what a wonderful person that worked in Africa in particular, and she was a champion for us, traveled all over the world to spread the news for what is the importance of being an occupational therapist? I'm not an occupational therapist. I am only an activist. And that's why I want to start and to welcome you by saying, Amadla! There's it, comrades, because <laughs> occupational therapy means you must be an activist. In Africa in particular, is to look at the glue. You can't see occupational therapy as part of, and if I do this, this is actually my connection with the, uh, at the back IT, and I've got five minutes. I can't speak about my life story and the importance of occupational therapists in five minutes, okay? That you must do in all for four days you're going to discuss this, and to the world where I have a wonderful country, but so important is to understand is that with accessibility currently, we're still just thinking a little bit of ramps. We now need to look at how do we move forward. And most important <laughs> is that it's not just about ramps. You know, I can climb this with assistance. It's about attitudes. And today I'm going to talk to you just slowly and very quickly to the organizers. I said they must tell me when it's one minute, three minutes, whatsoever. But what is most important for us is to look at in in general also is that where do we fit in? How do we see ourselves as occupational therapists? You can't just see yourself as just researchers. It needs to be emancipatory researchers. I had a I've put a book together to look at me. Three of these women, they died. And just get, I'm not uh, selling the book at all because it's sold out, but please don't Google it because I'm naked totally, fully naked in that book. And you know why I did the book in particular? Is to say, look at us and don't look away. Because that is your role as occupational therapist, is for society not to look away from per with persons with disability. Your main role is to look at how do you bring the interprofessionalities together. You're the glue to what we call in all the models that is there. It's extremely important. When you come from Africa, I'm a proud African woman. I'm a proud South African, but I'm from this continent. But the challenges that we have is huge. So you're from the UK. Where is the UK? Okay. Uh, there's Sweden, there's all over. It was so happy for me to see everybody's here. Is to look at what is working in your country. We have enough policies in the world. 
it's about now implementation. Okay? On your right hand side, you will see now that I, it's looking at action driven emancipation research in an inclusive society. Okay? You can do that later in your, and that is what I've developed. I've developed a model specifically for, for Africa per se is that what is the relevancy that we're looking at? What is the relevancy of your profession? You must ask that every single day. The next slide, please. When we look at the puzzle here, it should be action driven. It should be, it's about resilience that you're talking about. You're talking about agency, self-agency, emancipation, about taking charge and self-acceptance. My good grief, a doctor, what is in their curricula is to heal. Now I come. No? I had polio when I was three months old. I'm a proud 51-year-old woman. I should have never got polio. It's an apartheid story that I'll tell you later. Google that part, not the look at me part. <laughs> Google the, uh, the polio side. Okay? But the most important part is that is there was no occupational therapist. The community, how must I be? I can only talk about myself and my friends and uh, being an activist. He said, how do you bring me into the society so that the attitude should change and so that I could have access to education, access to health care, but access to health care that understands. Not access to health care to cure my polio. It won't cure my polio. <laughs> yeah? I've got polio. But how are you as occupational therapist going to assist me, not just with self-acceptance, but in society to be integrated? That's a big thing that you need to understand. In Africa in particular, we call it the African disease. No? Tomorrow I will be walking like this up and down. That's why I said, please put me on because I'm the rock star here tonight, Dave. So it's, but the next day, the next decade, when you come and see me again, I will be in a wheelchair because this glue as an occupation has failed me because we don't have enough emphasis of being an occupational therapist. My friend, Dr. Lucia Hess, introduced me when we first met in the 80s. I was a wild activist. My God, running with one leg with tutu. And I was at the University of the Wild Blacks, UWC. I'm a proud <laughs> alumni there. Ne? But she said she's doing occupational therapist. We asked her, what? My God, what is this thing? Ne? I didn't understand it. So... Just let you know what is a physiotherapist, but you don't know what is an oxygen. So what I want to leave you with one, number one, my time is nearly up, is that the awareness of this wonderful profession must become much more visible in all societies. <laughs> don't think if you're from Europe or from all over, you don't have a responsibility, you have a responsibility in Africa to assist us, to look at the resources. We talk about equality and equity. We can never be equal if we don't have resources. And my main drive is about equality versus equity. Those can't be without each other. So if you in this conference think you're only going to talk about occupational therapists, how can they, uh -uh. Uh, los to just go home. <laughs> just go home and have a liquor party here at in Cape Town. Eh? Then you can dance from this part to that part. So all that I want to say to you is that it's extremely important to understand in particular where we, as I can only talk as an African. So in the African positions is that we have a unique context. Inequality, equality, equity of people with disabilities, challenges that we face in the rural areas, it is vast. Am I right, colleagues? Am I talking here yeah, the right? Poverty, transport difficult. All that I want to say to you, you can flip to the last side because there you see my beautiful son. I had a beautiful son. He was my life, Adam. He died. He was 16 years old eight months ago. 
It was cerebral palsy. And I talk from a very privileged point of view because Adam had access to the integrated approach of being cared for. Occupational therapist with a physiotherapist with all the medical care but an integration. So he had quality of life. So I use my position and blessed position that I have and had with Adam to say that every child, every human being should have access to what I had. And I could only have it because I had a job. But if you are in the rural areas, I want to end off. If you are in the rural areas and you're poor and you live on a Sasa grant and you have no transport, it's a nightmare. And that is why I want you to discuss in your groups that we can't be only occupational therapists without community workers. CDW is extremely important. You have the knowledge, you have the research capacity, but how do you capacitate the community worker that needs to be the glue between you and policies and on the ground and connect with the healthcare systems? This is not just an African challenge. This is a global challenge. I thank you. Thank you so much, Marlene. What a way to start the Congress with that amazing challenge. And I look forward to everybody rising, to seeing everybody rise to that challenge over the coming four days. So next, I would like to introduce Satish Mishra. Satish is an occupational therapist who is the technical lead for disability and rehabilitation for the World Health Organization European Regional Office. Satish. Good morning, everybody. It's, it's a real pleasure and honor uh, to come to this country and to, be part, to participate in this wonderful conference. For records, I'm also an occupational therapist. <laughs> World Federation on, of Occupational Therapists and WHO relationship goes quite long back. In fact, WA40 has been one of the oldest professional association who has been in official relationship with World Health Organization. And this relation goes back from 1959. Within World Health Organization, there has been a lot of evolution within the rehabilitation sector uh, in the last two decades. And WA40 has played a very important role in this evolution. One of the indicator of the importance of World Federation of Occupational Therapists for WHO is that WFOT is one of the professional association which works across different program areas. It works with what we call the Global Alliance on Assistive Technology. It's a department of innovation, access, and use, which is mainly focused on assistive technology. WFOT plays an important role in the program on mental health and substance abuse. WFOT plays a very important role in management of non-communicable disease where disability, rehabilitation work comes in. WFOT plays a very important role in aging and life course, and WFOT also plays a very important role in emergency program. This indicator of the diversity, this wide role which WFOT plays uh, within World Health Organization programs is an indicator of the diversity of the occupational therapist professional. And the theme connected with diversity of this conference suits very well with the diverse work an occupational therapist does. Some of you might have been aware of the recent and uh, recent or let's say few years, uh, the development which has been going on globally in the frame of sustainable development goals and universal health coverage. Universal health coverage cannot be achieved without rehabilitation being part of it and rehabilitation cannot be achieved without occupational therapists being part of it. In the end, I would like, just like to emphasize 
that we cannot see the evolution of rehabilitation sector without WFOT and its members' involvement. Thank you very much. And then I have the pleasure of welcoming to the stage the Indoni Ar Dance, Arts and Leadership Academy, which is a post-schooling three-year professional training program that provides youngsters from communities at risk with classroom-based and on-the-job training to enable them to find sustainable employment. Their goal is to develop young, develop young people into highly skilled, confident, accomplished role models in their communities, harness creativity, inspire hope, and provide opportunities. The dance you're about to see is called Inkulu, sorry, Inkulu, Inkululeko. Actually, I'm supposed to be able to say that, <laughs> which means freedom. It was chore choreographed. The choreographer is director in Sp Sponakaliso Hindaba. This language was a little bit tight. Thank you.